Good morning everyone, Gadgin here from Henry's and we take the brand new Sony a7S III to a fashion production to see just how well it performs in a full day shoot environment. Let's get this started. Welcome back everyone and like some of you watching, when Sony announced the a7S III, I was hard pressed to believe that a camera like this could sport all the features that they listed. So when I got my hands on this thing, I had to bring it to a professional shoot to really push this thing to see what it could do. And I have to say, if you're not gonna watch the rest of this video, quite simply, it is astonishing. Sporting a brand new 12 megapixel sensor, Sony is saying that they can deliver up to 15 stops of dynamic range in their videos, which is absolutely remarkable because this level of dynamic range was typically reserved for cinema cameras. Only recently have we been seeing these numbers start to be achieved by much more portable solutions. And when we were testing it out, even though we didn't have the most brightest environments, I was able to bring in some of the footage and just look at the tonality in the skin of our model and I have to say, there's just so much detail to work with and manipulate in these videos. You can definitely use this camera for vlogging and YouTubing, but with this feature set, you're looking at something that's ready for filmmaking out of the box. Most notably, the Sony a7S III can capture 4K footage at up to 120p. This means when you record in this format, you can take it to your computer and time it to whatever you like, whether you want it to be regular speed at 24 or 25p, or slow it down to 120p, and you still have audio throughout this timeline. And as far as I know, in nearly every video format, you can capture 10-bit 422 information, meaning that you're just gonna have a lot more latitude with your video files when you're going back to edit them. And this is all done internally in the camera without the need for an external recorder. If you opt to shoot in Sony's S-Log3 format, they're claiming that you can get up to 15 stops of dynamic range. So while we didn't get to shoot outside in a bright sunny day, if you find yourself in that environment, you're just gonna have a lot more information that you can pull from to ensure that you get the right exposure. During our production, I also got to use this camera handheld and not just on a tripod, and I found out immediately that there were considerable improvements to the rolling shutter. You just didn't get that wiggliness that you would see in some of Sony's older cameras. A lot of work seems to be put in here so that when Sony's getting that information hitting the sensor, it's reading the sensor so much faster than it was before, resulting in a more natural looking video. On top of this, when you compare this camera with its predecessor, there's a new image processor that's up to eight times faster, but more importantly, sports the latest in autofocus technology that I believe is borrowed from the a7R4. And what this just means is that the autofocus is damn quick. It locked onto the subject and never lost. In fact, in some scenarios, it felt like it was too good. And what I mean by this is as the model was shifting and moving around and maybe the eyes were becoming obstructed, it quickly switched between the eye and the face, the eye and the face. And in some instances, it was a little confusing, but when I looked at the clips, the focus wasn't shifting like this. It was just the user interface that was deciding or letting me know what it was looking to focus on. I think that if I spent a little bit more time in the settings, I could tweak this so it wouldn't be as jumpy, but suffice to say, it is a really impressive autofocus system that sets the bar for just about everyone else. There really isn't many more than one other manufacturer in this category when it comes to autofocus. The a7S III also has a fully articulating display that you can turn around and monitor yourself with. It is also touch sensitive, but what I appreciated was the fact that when you flipped it around and if you were using the microphone jack, that did not obstruct the view of this LCD monitor. In fact, I really liked how these ports opened up. While they're not removable, there was no wiggle to them. They just opened and stayed there. And especially having that full HDMI port, it just seems like Sony listened to all the feedback from the Sony a7S II and designed a much more user-friendly product. The next thing I wanna talk about has a little bit of a backstory, but while I was attending the a7R4 event last year, we got a chance to talk to Sony designers. And 
One of the things, I didn't ask them, one of the things I actually pleaded to them was to upgrade their menu system. I just pleaded with them that this is something that needs their time and attention in that it will allow users to work more efficiently and new users to be onboarded faster. Now, I'm not gonna take the credit for this, but if you're gonna throw some credit my way, I'm not gonna deny it either, but Sony has gone ahead and introduced a brand new menu system. And this has been rethought from the ground up. Things are bigger, brighter, so you can use touch functionality to navigate, but they're also organized in a way that seems to make more sense. It just leads to overall a better user experience. When I jumped into change specific settings, I found them where I think they should be. And really, as a designer, that's what you're trying to achieve, to make sure that the end consumer can find what they need readily and easily. And while I'll admit that most people watching are not gonna geek out about user interface and user experience design, I just have to give them credit for taking the time to develop this, to improve this, and ultimately just give a great experience. I should also say that you can expand the ISO to well over 400,000, which means that in a lot of environments, you can really push this camera to capture video and still get a clean shot, even in lower light situations. I should also mention here that while this is a video centric camera, some of these features will actually cater well to a lot of photographers. If you happen to be a journalist in the field or a documentarian, you really don't need a lot of megapixels. Just because of the volume of shooting and transferring images over a wire, a 12 megapixel sensor will still give you plenty of resolving power for what you need to do. Being able to shoot high ISO because you're relying on ambient light situations, well, the Sony a7S III can be a great photography camera as well. I think that while it's marketed mainly for video shooters, there's a good subset of photographers that will see this as their perfect camera for the work that they do. The Sony a7S III also has five axis image stabilization. I didn't have enough time to test it out to a point where I can compare it against some of the competitors on the market, but in the shots that I was doing handheld, it held up pretty well. It didn't counteract my intentional movements in a way where some of the clips ended up having this jittery catch up to them. It was great to see that the recording button was moved to the top of the camera, but I will say it would have been nice to have a dedicated recording button on the back of the camera. But I can also see that Sony probably has this argument, well, you can dedicate custom button one on the back to recording. So giving you the option to have up to three recording buttons on your camera if you like. Anyway, they were just picking nits here. I wanna go back to the overall design. You can actually use either two UHS-2 SD cards on this camera or use the new CF Express Type A cards for much better capturing speeds. And this is especially useful in the SNQ modes. When you're using all the other video modes, you don't have to worry about CF Express Type A cards, but when you're in the SNQ mode, because the slow motion is being encoded in the camera, you will need faster cards for that. But now I wanna talk about something really special that really surprised me, and that is the viewfinder. It is a 9.4 million dot display. And while that's a wild number to throw out there, I will just say this, when I was looking through the viewfinder, it felt like looking in a cinema. It just enveloped the experience. And when you were capturing video here, it felt really good. While this was a pre-production camera that we got from Sony, it held up incredibly well. I used it for the full day, the entire shoot. I never had it lock up or freeze on me or overheat. It just kept up. And as we were shooting 4K footage at 120p over and over and over again, it did not quit. And when I brought the footage back home and looked at it and compared it to even the cinema camera that we had on site, it was remarkable to see how much detail and latitude we had in these video clips. As for the a7S III, if you're looking beyond your typical YouTube video or event video, if you're really looking at filmmaking and taking your content and really differentiating it from the pack, this is the type of camera that might allow you to do that. It's robust suite of features 
and in a really small footprint, allow you to create content in a way that was typically reserved to professional solutions, really big, robust solutions. And while I will say that you will wanna invest in some more stabilization and audio functionality to get the most out of this camera, to be able to get an image this good from a product that is this portable, it's simply remarkable. I had a little over 24 hours to test drive this camera and it has left me impressed. It didn't give me enough time to really push it to the ceiling, but just looking at this after a full production, I gotta say that ceiling is really high. And we're excited to test this camera in an upcoming deep dive. And there you have it, that's our first look of the brand new Sony a7S III. More importantly though, I'd love to hear what you guys think, so let's continue this conversation in the comments below. As always, my name's Gadgen. thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.